in your word. Jesus, watch me, Lord. In your word. Will you watch me? God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the, thou shalt not take the, name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold them guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now we'll have a reading from Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, the 13 and 14 verses. And when you get it, go ahead and read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, rather it be good or rather it be evil. And now we'll be going to Revelation 22 and picking up at verse 14. 22 and verse 14. And when you get it, go ahead and read it, brother. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Praise the Lord God. You know, uh, the Lord got his law read every Sabbath day. It should be read in every church. And every church should be keeping the Sabbath day instead of the first day of the week. But the thing is, is that maybe if we read the law more, maybe to cut down on crime and all this disobedience to the true and living God. So I want to welcome you again to another class from Phoenix, Arizona the Israel of God in Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Brother Ray, and I'm glad to be here with you. I'm one of the teachers from the Israel of God, and I'm so glad to see the day. It's a happy day for me, because uh, the Lord has blessed you guys with your own place. Ain't that so? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I tell you something, uh, I'm glad you got your own place because, boy, I got so many scriptures and we ain't got to rush. I can stay at the 12 o'clock midnight. 
I know that makes you happy. No, no, I'm just messing around, old people. But you know what? Praise the Lord. The Lord is blessing. And new camps are popping over all across the United States, even overseas and everywhere, because this thing is from the Lord. The Lord is calling his people home, Israel and the stranger. Because God is the God of all men. He told Abraham that through his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And that's where the Israel of God rolled according to the word of God. But today, we're going to deal with a little thing called, because we teach the Bible by subject and title. And today's uh, subject and title is Wisdom, a Spiritual Woman from God. Wisdom, a spiritual woman from God. We're going to take a look at this woman and see that uh, this is a, a woman that everybody needs to be acquainted with and stick to and become a customer because this woman here, she has got so many attributes, it is ridiculous. She's sent straight from the Lord, and we're going to show you today from the Word of God. But you know, every time you're talking about a spiritual woman, uh, uh, the sisters be looking at the virtuous woman, which we're going to start the scripture in, in Proverbs 30. But we're going to show you even this virtuous woman has got to know this spiritual woman from God. Even a servant of man has got to know this spiritual woman from God, even the children. But we're going to let the book tell you, and we're going to start this in Proverbs 31, because we got some scripture to deal with. So I figure we need to start with the wisest man that ever lived. And maybe he can shed some light on this spiritual woman from God. Proverbs 31. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Proverbs 31 and 10. Because this is where you can find, you know, uh, it's a good measuring stick for sisters to, uh, if you want to be virtuous, if you want to be a daughter of God, this virtuous woman set the example. We're going to show you a woman that's even above her, that even the brothers need to frame themselves after her. So this sister is something else, but she's straight from God, and we're going to show you today. So Proverbs 31 and verse 10, what did it say, brother? Okay. Proverbs 31 and 10, what did it say now? Who can find a virtuous woman? Uh-huh. For her price is far above rubies. Now, ain't this something? Now, this virtuous woman, this is a physical woman that's keeping God's commandments and serving God. But he said, who can find her? Because we done got totally away from a virtuous woman now. We think that a woman is just good for certain things. I'm not going to go into them things right now, but y'all know what I'm talking about. But who can find a virtuous woman? This is what the scriptures say. Uh, Mr. Mr. Can you turn him up just a little bit? Because we got to hear this word. Me, I'm just doing a little talking, but the word got to be heard. But go ahead and read, bro. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Ain't that something? Go ahead. So that he shall have no need of spoil. Uh, he ain't got to worry about her doing him wrong or hurting him no kind of way. Go ahead and read. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Ain't that something? She's going to do him good and not evil all the days of her life. But who are we talking about here? A virtuous woman, but go ahead and read. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hand. Yes, sir. But you can read the rest of this on your own. I just wanted to show you this is a natural woman. This is a woman that's trying to be a virtuous woman. But this spiritual woman from God is coming from a whole nother place. So now let's look at this woman that's coming from God. Let's go to Proverbs, the first chapter. We're going to be in Proverbs a little while, but then we're going to move all the way out. But we just laying some foundation about this spiritual woman from God. Proverbs 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Proverbs 1 and 20. And when you get it, brother, wait a minute, I still have some pages turning. Go ahead and read. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Uh -huh. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gates. Uh, in the city she uttereth her words, saying. So you notice he kept, he kept pointing this woman wisdom as her. 
her. She's crying in the chief places and in the concourse in the city. And she's crying, what is she crying? Turn to the Lord while you still got some time. Because it's getting so late in the game, Jesus said it's even at the door. This thing is close. Even if you got some understanding, if you looking at TV and the news, it's just like reading the Bible when you got some understanding. Yes, sir. I mean, this thing is coming together just like the Bible called it. So she said she's crying in the streets everywhere, the chief place of concourse. Go ahead and read. Saying, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Uh-huh. And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Ain't this something? So just let me know if you hate knowledge, what the book call you. Fool. But he said, how long will you, these simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will we think we could get up on Sunday, go to church, stay for about a half hour, leave some money on the table, and then we going straight to heaven? The book said, how long you go listen and be a part of this simple, simple doctrine? God is a God of knowledge, yes. and yes, by him, actions are ways, people. But look what she said. Now, go ahead and read. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Uh-huh. I will make known my words unto you. See, this is what you know this woman is sent straight from God, because when she comes, she coming with the words of God. Yes, sir. She is going to come and give you that word. She ain't going to turn to the right hand or to the left. That's why everybody got to be acquainted with this woman. Yes, sir. This is that spiritual woman from God. But go ahead and read. Because I have called and ye refuse. What? Read that again? I have called and ye refuse. So you mean tell me she called and she called him, but we refuse. Go ahead and read. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Now, now I'm going to say no man. No man regarded. When you look at all the masses of the people and look at the ones that received it, it looks like no man is regarding this thing. Yes, sir. That's why the Lord said, wide is the gate, broad is the way that lead yes, them to sir. destruction, and many there be that go in there at, but straight and narrow is the gate, and few there be that find it, that yes, lead to salvation. Ain't that something? But go ahead and read now, brother. But ye have said at naught all my counsel, uh -huh. and would none of my reproof. So this woman, this wisdom, this woman from the Lord, she said, you have said at naught all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. But remember, she getting her words from where? Straight from the true and living God. Yes, so sir. when you reject her, you rejecting the Lord. Yes, sir. He said, how long are you going to do this? How long is it going to be? Go ahead and read. I will... I also will laugh at your calamity. Uh -huh. I will mock your fear cometh. Go ahead. When your fear cometh as desolation uh -huh. and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Go ahead. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. And you know what that time going to be, people? We coming up on the time like it never would be before and it never shall be again. What time is this? The time of great tribulation. Yes, sir. Lord, sir, I've been trying to reach you all the time. I've been calling, I've been stretching out my hand and ain't no man regarded. Yes, but he said, when this time come, you're going to be calling my name real loud. But go ahead and read. Then shall they call upon me, uh -huh. but, but I will not answer. What? You're going to call on the Lord, then he ain't going to answer? Yes, go ahead. Sir. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Oh, my God. Go ahead and read. For that they hated knowledge. That's why you ain't going to be able to find the Lord? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. He did not choose to see the Lord and say, I lay before you this day life and death, good and evil. Choose life and, and live. live. Yes, sir. But it's going to be on you, people, because the Lord made us a free agent. Choose life and live. But he said, you're going to call me and I'm not going to ask me. Read that 30th verse. Go ahead. They would none of my, of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. And, and we wondering why we suffering. What's wrong with the world? Because we despise all the Lord's judgment and we, we despise all his reproof. Yes, sir. You don't want to hear none of his word. But let's see. He said, you're going to call me, but you, I'm not going to hear you. Let's see what time that is. Let's go to Amos, the eighth chapter now. We're coming back. Keep your spot in Proverbs. We'll be coming back there. We're just going to see here in Amos, what time is this going to be? When we gonna call on the Lord and we gonna not, he ain't gonna hear us. Amos 8 and we gonna pick it up at verse 11. Amos 8 and 11. And we waiting on you because I want everybody to read this with their own eyes. 
So they know this ain't something I'm making up. This stuff we reading out the book. Ain't something I come to know. <laughs> Amos 8 and 11. Okay, go ahead. Behold. The days come, saith the Lord God, uh -huh. that I will send a famine in the land, uh -huh. not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. Ain't that so? He says a famine in the land, not for food, not for water, but for hearing the word of God. That's why the Lord said, you're going to call them, you're going to seek them, and you ain't going to find the people. Yes, sir. Now the door is wide open for you to find them. But... The question is, will you seek it? Go ahead and read. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. Uh -huh. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. What? Because see, when that trouble get on you, that's when you're going to look for the Lord. You're going to be bending over backwards, but you know what? You're not going to find it. You know, it reminds me of that time in the days of Noah. When the Lord told Noah to put all everything he wanted on the ark, and when everything got on there, the Lord, he told Noah to stand back in the book, said the Lord sealed the door. Yes, sir. And when that rain started coming down, the people was knocking. They had all the time in the world to get on the ark, but they didn't choose to. Nope. But when that door was locked, that rain came, they was knocking, let me in, let me in. But the Lord sealed the door, even Noah couldn't open it, people. Because it, it'll come a time when you're going to look for the Lord and you ain't going to be able to find him. Mm. And this is what the preachers are supposed to be telling the people. They're Man. supposed to be warning them. Because you know what? The time is right around the corner. Yes, sir. So, read. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They're going to faint for thirst. Because why? They're looking for the Lord and they can't find him. Because when they had an the opportunity to, they didn't take advantage of it. But now, let's go back to Proverbs, the second chapter. I just wanted to show you that time when they're going to call on the Lord and they ain't going to be able to find him. Proverbs 2. Remember now, we're reading what the wisest man that ever lived. Surely he can tell us something about this wisdom, this woman that's sent from God. Proverbs 2, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Okay, you keep your, I told you to keep your spot in Proverbs. Go ahead and read. My son, if thou wilt receive my word uh -huh. and hide my commandments with thee. So I know one thing, I got two things I got to have the word of God. And the commandments, I got to keep them with me. That's what you're supposed to be carrying around your neck, not no little cross, no little emblem. You're supposed to put them commandments around your neck. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom uh -huh. and apply thine heart to understanding. See, this is what we're supposed to do. Apply your heart, which is your mind, unto wisdom and understanding. See, this woman is sent from God so tough that when she show up, she bring a couple of homies with her. And you know what it is? <laughs> Knowledge and understanding. Yes, sir. This woman here is something else. We're going to show you when we get out of here today. But go ahead and read. Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge uh -huh. and lifteth up thy voice for understanding. See, that's all you got to do to seek the Lord. If you really want this knowledge, just lift up your voice for understanding. Ask the Lord and be sincere and he'll give it right there to you. No matter what nation, no nationality you come out for, out of, if you seek the Lord in spirit and in truth, the Lord will be right there for you. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. If thou seekest her as silver uh -huh. and searchest for her as for hid treasures. See, if you know you got 20 billion in the backyard, you're not going to take a couple of shovels and say, I couldn't find you. You're going to dig so tough, ain't going to be able to see you. All they going to be is dirt coming up. Because <laughs> you're looking for that money. But the thing is, is that you've got to dig in this word the same way, people. You've got to dig in this word the same way. And let's see what happens when you do it. Go ahead and read. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord uh -huh. and find the knowledge of God. Ain't that something? That's when you're going to find it. But what you got to do, people, you got to dig. I'm talking about men and women. Don't say, uh, yeah, Ray, I've been dealing with the book real heavy. I, I read three, four scriptures last year. <laughs> last year? Last year? <laughs> Come on, man. Go ahead and read. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. This is how we know this wisdom, this woman from the Lord is straight from God. Go ahead and read. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Yes, sir. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Because if you walk uprightly and got, keeping God's commandments, he'll buckle anybody that get in front of you. Yes, sir. He said he'll prepare a table for you in the midst of his enemies. Go ahead and read. 
he keepeth the paths of judgment uh -huh. and preserveth the way of his saints. Yes, sir. But now skip down to verse 20 and continue. What did he say now? That thou mayest walk in the way of good men uh -huh. and keep the paths of the righteous. Go ahead. For the upright shall dwell in the land uh -huh. and the perfect shall remain in it. Right, the upright going to dwell in the land, though, let's keep the commandments, but the upright is going to remain. Who is the upright, the perfect? These are the ones that done turned and became God. Yes, sir. They're going to remain now. Go ahead and read. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, uh -huh. and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. So we know who's going to be rooted out of the earth when the Lord comes. Who is going to be? The transgressors. And mm. what does transgression mean? To break the law. Breaking of the law. That's why the Lord wants us to quit that sin. But now, skip down. Are oh, we good? Now let's go a little further. Go right into that third chapter. Because we're chasing down this wisdom, a spiritual woman from God. Three and verse one. What did it say, bro? My son, forget not my law, uh -huh. but let thine heart keep my commandments. I wonder who it was that said the commandments ain't no more. Ooh. Who Ooh. was that guy? Go ahead and read. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. I told you this woman got some boy, she got some stuff that's good. You mean <laughs> length of days and peace? You want to live long? Keep the commandments. Deal with this spiritual woman from the Lord and she'll give it right to you. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Uh huh. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Write them upon the table of thy heart. This is your heart here, people, your mind. And what you're doing, this is the new covenant. He said, I ain't gonna write it no more on stone, but I'm gonna write it in your hearts and in your mind will I write them. Yes, this is the law. He got it in your mind and in your heart. Go ahead and read. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Yes, sir, because when you start dealing with it like that, when you open your mouth and start talking, hey, they gonna say this brother here. He been spending some time with that spiritual woman wisdom. Yes, sir. But now, skip down to verse 13 and continue. What did it say? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Yes, sir. And the man that getteth understanding. I mean, you be happy because you're tired of this false doctrine. You're tired of this false teaching. You're tired of sitting up in church. I mean, listen to the same. You know what the preacher's going to say before he's saying because he's teaching the same thing every <laughs> Sunday. You get tired of it. But when you find that woman wisdom, boy, you happy and you rejoice. Go ahead and read. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. What? And the gain thereof than fine gold. You mean to tell me this woman and this wisdom is above money? Yes, sir. Maybe we've been seeing the wrong thing, people. Go ahead and read. She is more precious than rubies. What? And all the things that can't thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Ain't that something? All the things that you can desire cannot be compared unto her. This let me know this book and this wisdom is above the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Lost Books, the Septuagint, you <laughs> name it. Ain't nothing in this earth to be compared unto. Did you know what you read, people? And let me know that's all you need is this word of God and believe and take hold of that wisdom that woman from the law yes sir what verse you had bro verse 16 go ahead and read length of days is in her right hand what and in her left hand riches and honor this girl is carrying some things ain't she yes, go sir. ahead and read her ways are ways of pleasantness. Uh huh. And all her paths are peace. Go ahead. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. Uh huh. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. So not only do you got to get her, you got to retain her. And if you do, he says she's a tree of life. She will even give you everlasting life. See, yes, this is the woman that we need to be kicking the weed. This is a woman that you and your wife can sit down and have a threesome and everybody's happy. Yes, sir. Dang, Why? Dang. Because we're dealing with the word of God. Yes, you understand sir. what I'm saying, people? Yes, sir. I'm just trying to make it plain to you so you can hear me. Make that thing plain. Make it plain, my brother. 
What verse you got? 19? Verse 19. Go ahead and read. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. Uh -huh. By understanding hath he established the heavens. Go ahead. By his knowledge the depths are broken up. See, this is how the Lord did all these things by wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Go ahead and read. And the clouds drop down the dew. Uh -huh. My son. Let not them depart from thine eyes. Go ahead. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. But how are you going to get it? You got to deal with this woman sent from God, this spiritual woman. Yes, sir. She'll give you long life. She's a tree of life. She'll give you understanding and knowledge and wisdom. Go ahead and read. So shall they be life unto thy soul uh -huh. and grace to thy neck. Go ahead. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, uh -huh. and thy foot shall not be stumbled. See, your, your foot shall not stumble. See, even if you slip and fall sometimes, we know we ain't gonna walk perfect in this life, but that woman of wisdom will make you get up, get back in the race, and keep on running. You can't give up, because why the book said, he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Yes, but now, read that 24th verse, and we're gonna go further. When thou liest down, Thou shalt not be afraid. No, no. Yeah. Thou shalt lie, lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Because, boy, when you keep them commandments and you're dealing with this spiritual woman from God, you ain't doing nobody no wrong. You can lay down and get you some peaceful rest. Because her thing is peace. Because why? She sent straight from the Lord. But now, let's go right into this fourth chapter. Look like this woman wisdom. See, Solomon ran into her. And boy, she blessed him, and she'll bless you the same way. But you got to read, you got to study. Proverbs 4 and 1, what did it say? Hear ye children, the instruction of a father, uh -huh. and attend to no understanding. Go ahead. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. And I'm going to tell you something, you ain't going nowhere without that law. That's why the Lord keep in mind, my commandment, my law. That's the key to get into the kingdom right there. Please. Yes, sir. But you got to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But this wisdom, this woman is sent straight from God. And when she show up, she bring her best two friends with her knowledge and understanding. Go ahead and read. For I was my father's son, ten, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Uh -huh. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. We can't get away from it. Let your heart keep my words and keep my commandments and live, not only in this life, but also eternal life in yes, God's sir. kingdom. You mean this woman will bring you there? Yes, sir. This woman here is something else. This is a woman I want to spend some time. What else would you do for you? Go ahead and read. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, uh -huh. neither decline from the words of my mouth. Don't decline from them, go ahead. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Uh -huh. Love her, and she shall keep thee. So you gotta love this woman, and if you do, she gonna keep you. She gonna keep you on that straight and narrow with this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's why the Lord want everybody to touch this spiritual woman from God. Are y'all with me? You getting some understanding? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go ahead and read. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, uh -huh. get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Go ahead. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. Boy, you start dealing with this wisdom and knowledge before you know it, you will be among kings. Preaching that word. You say, why yes, did sir. I get here? Because wisdom, this woman will promote you. She'll bring you before kings and rulers, and you will be bringing that word of God. Go ahead and read. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost remember her. Embrace her. When thou dost embrace her. Go ahead and read. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. And what else will she give you? A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. What a crown of glory? This woman can give you a crown of glory? Yes. And we're going to show you. We're going to look a little bit into this crown and take a look at it, people. And when do you get your crown? Is when that seventh trumpet is blown. Yes, sir. That's when Jesus comes. He said, I come and my reward is with me. But this woman will take you and lead you all the way to pick that crown of glory up. 
But we're going to look a little bit at this crown a little bit closer. And then we're going to get back to this woman. But now, let's go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Because she says she will even give you a crown of glory. This girl here is something else. Yes, sir. She is somebody that I want to spend some time with. I want her to love her so that she will love me. Right. 2 Timothy 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 5. Now, this is Paul talking here. Let's see what he said now, because he tapped into that spiritual woman from God. Let's see what he said. 2 Timothy 4 and 5. Okay, go ahead. But watch thou in all things. Uh -huh. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an, of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. That's right, because when you're going through this thing, people, you're going to have some afflictions. You're going to go through some things. But the thing is, don't let it turn you away from the Lord. Because yes, the Lord sir. said in Acts that through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. For I am now ready to be offered. Uh -huh. And the time of my departure is at hand. So the Lord, Paul has served the Lord all his life. And now the time of his departure is at hand. It's when he's getting ready to die. Let's see what he said now. Go ahead. I have fought a good fight. Uh huh. I have finished my course. Yes, sir. I have kept the faith. Because you got to keep the faith how long, people, until the end. Go ahead and read. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Oh, Paul said crown of righteousness because he took knowledge with that spiritual woman that come from God. Yes, she sir. She took him all the way and she gave him that crown from the Lord. Ain't that so? Yes, sir. But look what he said now. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, uh -huh. and not to me only, but to un unto all them also that love his, appear that love his appearing. Ain't that something? So Paul ain't the only one getting the crown. All those that love his appearing. All those that done took some time with that spiritual woman that came from God. Because uh, Revelation tells you, 6, that some people are going to be hollering for the mountain rocks to fall on them. Hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? That's right. But those that's been waiting and serving the Lord, they're going to say, even so, come Lord Jesus. And the Lord got a crown waiting for you. Because you done spent some time with that spiritual woman from the Lord. Now let's go a little further and look at this crown a little bit more, but we're going to take a detour and we're coming back to this crown. Let's go to Proverbs, the seventh chapter. Things are all over the book. But when you mention it, ain't nobody never heard of nothing from it, about it. And let me know we got to do some reading, people. We're watching too much TV. We on the internet too much. We listening to Dr. Phil too long. <laughs> <laughs> we looking at Oprah Winfrey. We no. got to get back to this woman of wisdom. Proverbs 7 and 1. What did it say now? My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Look like you're trying to drive home a point, ain't it? Yes, sir. Get the word and keep my commandments with thee. Go ahead and read. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Hey, you want to live? You like long life? Lord said, keep the commandments and keep the law as the apple of your eye, which is the commandments. Go ahead and read. Bind them upon thy fingers. Uh-huh. Write them upon the table of thine heart. That's that new covenant right in your mind. Go ahead. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. Yes. And call understanding thy kinswoman. Because when wisdom show up, knowledge and understanding is right behind the picture. Yes, sir. He said, these are these women from the Lord that the Lord wants you to kick it with. No matter if you're a female or a male or a little child, whatever, start reading the word of God. Yes, sir. I remember I seen this brother at class one time, he had a little son. He said, boy, give me 10. And I'm looking for the boy to do some push up or something. But the boy started naming the commandments off. Ooh, -hoo. Yes, sir. I said, boy, you got something there, boy, you got something there. Ain't that something? And then he turned around and told his dad, now you give me 10. <laughs> I got him out of the room before he, before he asked me. <laughs> I thought that was beautiful, though. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But read that verse 3 again and continue. What did it say? That they may keep 
that they may keep thee from the strange woman. Where from, you at now? Verse 5. I said read that verse 3 again. Oh, verse 3. Listen to oh, me yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry okay, about that, go ahead. Bind them upon thy fingers. Uh -huh. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Because we're trying to drive a point home. This whole lesson is to let you know, people, get back to the word of God. This is what we're telling you. Go ahead and read. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, uh -huh. and call understanding thy kinswoman. Yes. That they, may, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flattereth with her words. And we know who the strange woman is, people. That's a woman that's not yours. But the thing is, this woman of wisdom, you can fool around with her all day long and your wife won't say nothing. But if she don't dig the word of God, she might get mad at you. Mm -hmm. Well, she just gonna have to be mad at me because I'm gonna deal with this woman here. And mm -hmm. I hope you deal with her too. Because I'm on my way somewhere. I'm trying to get to the kingdom. But now so. let's go back to Revelation 3 now. Because we're going to chase this crown down. Because this woman will give you a crown. A crown of life. But you got to watch out for this crown once you get it. She warned and telling you. Revelation 3 and verse 11. Revelation 3 and 11. Revelation 3 and 11. Okay, go in. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Right away, he's telling you, I'm coming quickly. They're letting you know how much time we got. And he said, but don't let no man take your crown. Not even you. Yes, sir. You can take your own crown with your own foolishness, people. Yes, sir. Lord said, don't let no man take your crown. Go ahead and read. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in my temple of my God. Uh-huh. And he shall go no more out. And I, and I will write upon him the name of my God. In the name of the city of my God, uh -huh. which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. Uh -huh. And I will write upon him my new name. Ain't this something? Now, even this New Jerusalem, this is the Father's kingdom, coming down out of heaven from God, people. And they're going to dwell among men. And if you go into heaven, you're going to miss the Lord. It'll be somebody that'll tell you, look here, the Lord is gone. The Lord He's is in gone. Jerusalem. <laughs> but you've got to follow the word of God. You can't go wrong, people. You cannot go wrong. But he said, don't let no man take your crown. Not now. I want you to put your thinking caps on now. And we're going right into Revelation, the fourth chapter. Because you've got to really have your spiritual eyes open on this. And I'm going to see, can't you see this? Revelation 4. And verse 1. That's why you got to pay attention. The Lord said, man, don't live. Do not live by bread alone, but by what? By every word. And this is one of them places where you got to pay attention to every word to understand what the Lord is saying. Okay, go in. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. See, right away, see, Ray, see there? We're going to heaven, I told you. But is we going to heaven? Let's take a closer look at it now. Go ahead and read. And the first verse which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, uh -huh. which said, come hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Yes, sir. He said, come up hither. So now I know you're in heaven, Ray. I know you're there. Well, let's pay attention and be careful, my readers. Uh, I need you to just say every word, every word. Pay attention. Okay, go ahead. And immediately... I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. Oh, he said, now I know for sure, Ray, we in heaven. He had told you three <laughs> times. Well, let's look at it, people. Go ahead and read. Finish and, that. And one sat on the throne. Uh-huh. But now he sat on the throne. Now this is where you got to pay attention right here. Go ahead. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper uh -huh. and a sardine stone. Go ahead. And there was a rainbow round about the throne uh -huh. in sight like unto an emerald. Hey, wait a minute now. I want to ask y'all a question. What throne is the rainbow around, people? Is it around the Father's throne or is it around Jesus' throne? It's around Jesus' throne. And where is Jesus' throne going to be at? On earth. Because it's three heavens, people. That's what we dropping the ball at. Three heavens. One, 
you walk on, you're sitting on right now. Two is when you get off the ground until you go to that black hole where you can't seem like go no further. It's just out of space, they call it. But you know that? That you're coming into a bottom, a bottom of water. And above that water is the throne of God. That's the third heaven, people. Ain't that something? So every time you see heaven, don't go up to the moon. A lot of times it's talking about right here on earth. The Lord said he's going to gather Israel from the four corners of heaven. Is Israel in heaven, people? Is he up there around the throne above that water? No. Where is he at? Right here on earth, people. That's why you got to get some understanding. He said, well, that rainbow was around his throne. And why is it around his throne? He said, when I look at it. It's going to remind me not to destroy the earth no more with water. It's not going to be right to remind me of no parade of sodomites coming through the streets. No, sir. It's to remind me that I'm not going to destroy the earth no more by water. Ain't that something? Yes, sir. It's around Jesus' throne. But I'm going to show you. Keep reading. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Wait a minute. What these four and twenty seats is? Is it twenty-four seats in heaven around the throne of God? No, people. But you know what the seats this is? These are the sons of Aaron, the governors of the sanctuary. And you know what let me know this? It's the first resurrection. And how do I know that? Read. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting and clothed in right, white raiment. Uh-huh. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Wait a minute, people. When do you get your crown of gold? When the seventh trumpet is blown. Yes, sir. And not a day before. That's why Jesus said, I come and my reward is with me. It's with me. Paul said, I know I'm going to get a crown, but not only me, but all those that love his appearing. Yes, sir. But you ain't going to get it until the Lord come back here and sit on the throne of David. You hear what I'm saying, people? You thought you was in heaven. No, no. You're looking down at the throne of the Lord. But read that fifth verse. What did it say? And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings uh -huh. and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Go ahead. Which are the seven spirits of God. And these seven spirits of God, you know what they call them? These are the eyes of the Lord. And they're going to and fro to the earth and they're writing down and watching everything you do. Don't nothing get by the Lord. And you know when it's going to be cracked on you? The day of judgment. Mm. The books was open. What book? He's talking about this book and the book that your works is in. Ain't that something? Yes, sir. Well, go ahead and read a little bit more. But now skip down to verse 10 and continue. What did they say? So you want verse 10 or verse 9? Verse 9. Go ahead. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, uh -huh. the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne uh -huh. and worship him that liveth forever and ever. And what did they do? And cast their crowns before the throne, saying, What did they say? Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Ain't this something? But they cast their crowns before the throne, people. But when do you get your crown? When the seventh trumpet is blown, not a day before. If you don't believe it, it ain't in this lesson. But what did Hebrews 11 chapter tell you? He said, uh, in fact, let's just read that right quick. I could tell it to you, but I know if you read it, you'll never forget it. Turn over to Hebrews 11 quick. It wasn't in the lesson, but uh, I'd like to show you what he said and not tell you. And we're going to get, this is about the great patriots, all those that served God throughout all generations. Let's see what the Lord said. Pick it up at uh, verse 36. But you read this on your own time. We're just hitting it for high points. These are all the people that served. That's why I can't believe. These were the great patriots of the Bible. And they didn't get their reward yet. But then when some guy died a day, he goes straight to heaven. Something is wrong, people. But go ahead and read it, bro. At 36. Yes. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yeah. Moreover of bonds and imprisonment. These, these were the servants of God we reading about? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. I mean, they was cut in half, man. 
These were God's servants. Go ahead and read. Were tempted, were slain with the sword. Uh huh. They wandered about in, in sheepskins and goatskins. Uh huh. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Boy, they went through some stuff, didn't they? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Of whom the world was not worthy. Uh huh. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Go ahead. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. What? Now, ain't none of these people received a promise? And then some Johnny come later and went straight to heaven? What did he say? God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. They without us shall not be made perfect because you're getting the reward at the same time. Same time. Nobody getting it before, and you can't get it until that seventh trumpet is blown. People. Yes, sir. This is what we're trying to let you know. That's why we got to take some time with that spiritual woman from the Lord. We'll know these things. We'll understand these things. But unless you read and pray and ask God for understanding, you're going to always be in the dark if you don't read this book, people. I'm letting you know. But now, this is not to condemn you, to break you down, make you, this is supposed to build you up and give you strength to continue on. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But now, let's go further. Let's go to Revelation, the second chapter. Because we still dealing with these crowns a little bit. Revelation 2 and 9. 2 and 9. But this wisdom, the spiritual woman for God will lead and take you and get you right to that crown of glory. Go ahead and read. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Uh, how you going to be rich? and be poor at the same time. Hmm. Like Peter them told that man, look at silver and gold, we ain't got none, but that which we have, we'll give it thee. Yes, Rise sir. up thy bed and walk. Hey, it seemed like he got the true riches. This man been crippled all his life. But he said, take up your bed and walk. Go ahead and read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews uh -huh. and are not. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. Whoa. You mean to tell me some people out there saying they Jews and they not? Oh, we. And they the synagogues of Satan? Oh, we. Did I say that or did we read that? Go ahead and read. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Uh huh. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. These are some of the brothers that got to go through great tribulation. Some of them going to be cast into prison. Let's see what else is going to be happening to them. Go ahead and read. That ye may be tried. Oh, you're going to be tried, huh? Go ahead and read. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Uh-huh. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Ain't that some? Lord said, be faithful unto death, I'll give you a crown of life. See, the Lord let you know a secret in death. The Bible speaks of the first death as sleep. So if you can die in great tribulation, how long was great tribulation? Three and a half years, right? Three and a half years. So what if I get killed in the third year? Got a half a year left. To sleep. But you know what? Isaiah told you to enter into your chambers and to shut that doors about thee. That's when they letting that crash get in the ground. As it was but for a moment. Because if you died in Adam's time, it'll be just like you just nodded off. And you woke up. But when you wake up, it's going to be a whole different scene. Yes, sir. Because when you sleep, you ain't got no time of conscience. It's just like you get home from work, you real tired. You say, I'm just going to take a few minutes and I'm going to get up and cook dinner. <laughs> and boy, when you wake up, it's 10 minutes to 6. You got to go back to work. <laughs> Man, where did the time go? Because you ain't got no conscience of time, people. Yes, sir. But that's what the Bible say. The first death is you sleep. Don't be afraid of that. You, go, you do that every night when you go to bed. Every night. You're sleeping. You don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But then the Lord wake you up. And then you're back in the bank. So don't fear that first death. What death should we fear? That second, second death. death. Yes, sir. That's the death you got to be watch out for. Yes, sir. You don't want no parts of that. But he said, if you hold on to the end, I will give you a crown of life. Let's go to Proverbs 5 now. Proverbs I just wanted to show you a little bit about that crown. You mean to tell me that spiritual woman can give me a crown? Yes, sir. Yes, she can. Proverbs 5 
And we're going to read one or two and then we're going to skip. Proverbs 5 and 1 and 2 and skip. Okay. Go ahead. My son, attend unto wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Ain't that something? Bow your ear to understand it. What, what you going to? You're going to put some water in your ear. We're going to show you later. But go ahead and read. <laughs> That thou mayest regard discretion, uh -huh. and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Oh, that your lips may keep knowledge. But now, skip down to verse 11. What did it say? And thou, and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Now here's a guy that didn't spend no time with that woman of wisdom. But in the end, he mourning at last. And let's see what he said. Go ahead and read. And say, how have I hated instruction? And my heart despised reproof. See, it's too late to figure that out then. You want to receive it while you're living, while you got a chance to change. Yes, but sir. when you get in the lake of fire, you can't come out. He said, how come I didn't listen? How come I didn't take no instruction? Then the Lord said they didn't want to hear nothing I had to say. They despised all my reproof. Go ahead and read. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Go ahead. Nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. You wouldn't listen to nobody but yourself. Go ahead and read. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Ain't that something? But now, skip down to verse 21 and continue. For the ways of men are before the eyes of the Lord. Uh-huh. And he pondereth all his goings. Because you ain't getting away with nothing. People are looking at everything. He watching every move. When you think you at the hotel with another woman, ain't nobody looking at you, the dew drop in way back up in the woods. That angel is right there, writing it down. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. Do drop in, writing your name down next to the woman. Because <laughs> man, the Lord is pondering all our goings, people. Be mindful of that, then you'll be, you'll watch yourself how you operate. Go ahead and read. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. His own iniquity shall take him. Go ahead. And he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Uh-huh. He shall die without instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Oh, we don't want to be, a, we don't want to be among that number. But this woman from wisdom will keep you from that, people. All you got to do is spend some time with her. Read some books. Set your thing up on some kind of... Uh, a study thing, you know, at least try to, the book saying the Lord's Prayer, uh, give us this day our daily bread. Get some daily bread every day, people. Don't let your day be so busy to where you ain't getting none of that daily bread. Because if you keep not getting it, for you know you'll keep drifting, you'll drift, you'll, and you'll be so far in oblivion you can't get back. Mm. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Mm. This is the thing, but see, this is what we need to do, sit down and have a family talk, people. So we can be better. Yes, sir. This is, this is to, to bless you and to warn you. Yes, but sir. now, let's look at this thing, that this, how precious this wisdom, this woman from the Lord is. Let's go to Proverbs 28 now. I'm not Proverbs Job 20, I'm sorry. But this is one of my, one of my favorite preachers. Job 28. Because this is such a beautiful piece, the whole Bible is people, but this really got me because I was a guy that didn't have no knowledge and no wisdom. I didn't know no word. But when I seen this, I said, oh my God, this thing is precious. This woman here is straight from the Lord. Job 28 and verse 1. We're going to do a little skipping, but you read this thing in your own entirety. We're just hitting the high points for time's sake, so I won't have you here till sundown. <laughs> Job 28 and 1, what do he say now? Surely there is a vein for, for the silver and for the place of gold where they find it. That's true, you know, you can find silver, gold all in the earth. But go ahead and read. Iron is taken out of the earth uh -huh. and, and brass is molten out of the stone. Right, so I guess that's how they get brass. They melt that stone down. But skip down to verse 7, a question was asked, and let's see what it was. Seven verse. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, uh -huh. and which the vulture's eye have not seen. Now, you know, that vulture could be on top of the mountain. He could see down in the valley, see his prey. 
and swoop down on him because he got excellent that sight. But this is a path that even he ain't seen. Go ahead and read. The lion's whelp have not trodden it, uh -huh. nor the fierce lion passed by it. And the lion's whelp, that's a young lion or a fierce lion ain't passed by it. Go ahead and read. He put it forth his hand upon the rock. Uh -huh. He overturneth the mountain by the roots. And see, I'm looking at these mountains down here in Arizona, man. They so big and powerful. The Lord said, I'll turn them over by the roots. Mm. Yes, sir. See. Ain't that so? Yes. Go ahead and read. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks. Uh -huh. And his eyes seeth every precious thing. I told you he's looking at everything, people. He see everything. But mm. read. He bindeth the floods from overflowing. Uh huh. And the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But he asked the question, what was it? But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Where's, where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding? This is what we all want to know. This is all we've been seeking for. Where is it at? Go ahead and read. Man knoweth not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Ain't that some? Ooh. It ain't found in the land of the living? That's why you try to sit at home and figure this thing out on your own. You can't do it. Because it ain't found in the land of the living. The Lord had to send it down to you by that woman, wisdom. Mm. She got to come right to your doorstep and drop it right off. Do you hear what we're reading, people? Message. Skip down to verse 21. What did it say? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Oh, kept close from the fowls. That's that path the books as I ain't seen. Go ahead and read. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. Uh-huh. God understandeth the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof. Go ahead. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven. I tell you, he's looking at everything. Go ahead and read. To make the weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. Uh-huh. When he make, made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, uh -huh. then did he see it and declare it. He prepared it. Yeah, he searched it out. Because this is the way God worked. He said, then did he see it, he declared it, he prepared it, and then he searched it out. Yes, sir. But this he perfect in work. Now, if a perfect being can have worked like this, how, how, would, how should we be working? But what was the common denominator to all of this, my brother? Go ahead and read it. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Oh, my God. You mean mm. we went all the way around the world to get right back to this simple common denominator? Mm. Still dealing with that wisdom, that woman from God. Yes, sir. The fear of the Lord. So I know I need what? The fear of the Lord, the commandments, and I need that spiritual woman sent from God. Yes, sir. So I can get my crown. But now, let's go first. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. That's the beginning of the wisdom, people, to fear the Lord. I don't have to fear God. I said, yeah, you're going to be a dummy the rest of your life. Mm. First Corinthians 2. Because if you fear the Lord, you're going to watch what you say and what you do. Because right. God truly is a father. See, he ain't going to just pat you on the back. He'll give you a couple of ones. Don't do that, son. But you keep fooling around, then he'll give you what they call a hard check. Or the time of your visitation when he visits you personally. Because mm. you don't believe he's a father. And he will correct you, people. Believe me. But now, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 1, what did it say? And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Right, Paul said, I didn't come to you declaring to you the, uh, with excellent speech, not even using big words. And all. No, no. I came with you declaring unto you the testimony of God. Go ahead. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Uh-huh. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Go ahead. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, uh -huh. but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Right, he's not coming to you with man's wisdom, because we'll find out that man's wisdom is foolishness. Why? Because man wants to exclude God out of his wisdom. That's why it's foolish. 
Go ahead and read. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, uh -huh. but in the power of God. Go ahead. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, uh -huh. yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. Also, the wisdom of this world and all the princes of this world come to naught. What does naught mean? Nothing. Nada. Go ahead and read. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, uh -huh. even the his, hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. See, that's why we couldn't find it. This is hidden wisdom that the Lord got to reveal to you by this woman here. Yes, sir. She got to show it to you. And how long has it been around? Since the world unto our glory, since the world began, people. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. Ain't that something? And I tell you today, they still don't know it. Skip down to verse 14 and continue. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Oh, uh, this is the natural carnal minded man. He ain't thinking nothing but flesh. Go ahead. For they are foolishness unto him. Uh huh. Neither can, neither can he know them. Go because ahead. they are spiritually discerned. They spiritually understood. A natural minded man can't receive the spirit of God. The Lord said his mind is enmity against God because he cannot receive the law of God. Why? Because he is carnal minded. And when you say the law ain't no more, that's what you're saying. You got that carnal mind. Yes, sir. And you can't see nothing that the Lord is saying. Ain't that something? Man. When you tell me the law ain't no more, I look at you right away. I want to pin you. I'm watching you at all times because you allowed me to do anything. But go ahead and read. Verse 15, go ahead and read. But he, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, uh -huh. yet he himself is judged of no man. Go ahead. For who hath known the, the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Uh -huh. But we have the mind of Christ. You mean to tell me that your mind, you got so much wisdom that you instructed God now? Man. Surely you are messed up. But that's what Man. we're telling the Lord. Hey, look here. Lord said, my Sabbath is uh, on the seventh day. You say it's on the first day. Lord said, I'm going to set my kingdom up on earth. You said, no, you're going to heaven. You teaching God. Mm. And I don't think that's a wise decision. Brother. No, sir. No, no. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go see the Lord use his word about the spiritual woman. He used it by water. He used it by wine. He used it by milk. It's like he say, uh, you know, we're going to read. I ain't going to run before the word of God because the word is what we need to listen to. Let's go to Revelation 22 now. Revelation 22. Let me show you how many ways the Lord talk about his word because you ain't going nowhere without this word, people. It's going to make you stronger. Remember now, there was ten virgins. Five was wise. Five was foolish. Five put oil in their lamps and five didn't. What is that oil? And what is that lamp? That lamp is you. And like a regular lamp, if you don't put no fuel in there, it's gonna go out. And it's the same way with you. If you ain't putting no oil in your lamp, your lamp is gonna go out, people. Mm. That's why you gotta watch yourself. Revelation 22 and 16. 22 and 16. What did it say now? I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Uh -huh. I am the root and the offspring of David. Yes, sir. And the bright and morning star. So you're looking for that star, David? Who is it? It's Jesus. But keep reading now. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Uh -huh. And let him that hear it say, come. Everybody saying, come, come, come where? Go ahead and read. And let him that is a thirst come. Oh, let him that's thirsty come. Go ahead. And whosoever will. Let him take the water of life freely. What? What is this water of life? This is the word of God. And this spiritual woman wisdom, she got gallons of it to give to you. But you got to receive it. He said, whosoever will, let him come and take of the waters of life freely. Because freely. this word will get you eternal life, people. Yes, sir. That's what I'm trying to show you. But now, let's look at it a little close. Look at this water a little bit. Let's go to Isaiah 55 now. And see, when you're dealing with his word, you ain't got to do no whole lot of talking. All you got to do is turn the page and read. Let the book speak for itself. We let the book talk to us today on this Sabbath day. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 55. 
And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And now he said, Lucky, whosoever will come, whosoever thirst come, come ye to the waters and drink. Let's see what water he's talking about. Isaiah 55 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. What water? And he that have no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yeah, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So hey, you say, if you know, I don't drink wine, then get some milk. You say, I'm, I'm lactose intolerant. Well, then get some water. <laughs> Whatever you need, get this word. <laughs> Lord, got your number, I don't care where you go to. He said, come get it without money and without price. That's a, a, a memo we need to send to these false prophets. But go ahead and read. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Uh-huh. And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Man, you go up in these churches, places packed, and you leave a bank on the table before you leave out of there. And then, but you ain't leaving out with nothing. Mm. I just like going to the grocery store and getting a box of toothpicks and spending five thousand dollars for it. This is Lots what you know every place. Sunday morning, you ain't getting nothing for You ain't never heard no teaching like this in the Sunday church, people. Because you know why we're doing something real strange? We reading the book. Yes, sir. But go ahead, start at verse 2 again and continue. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Uh-huh. And your labor for that which satisfieth not. But this is what the Lord said, do what? Hearken diligently unto me, uh -huh. and eat ye that which is good, uh -huh. and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Let your soul delight itself in fatness. What fatness? The fatness of the word of God. Yes, sir. I mean, you're supposed to set that book over there on the table and bag up 10 feet and run to it like it's a pool of water. A pool. <laughs> and jump into it. I'm talking about swim all around, backstroke. Everything, in this, I'm talking about be full with it. Yes, sir. And then you'll be clean, people. That's what the Lord is telling you. Read that third verse. What does it say? Incline your ear and come unto me. Uh huh. Here and your soul shall live. Well, they want you to drink. What kind of water are you drinking with your ear, people? Yes, sir. I ain't never seen nobody take a glass of water and put it to their ear. Woo, I sure am thirsty. Never. But he wants you to listen to that word. That's how you drink, people. Yes, sir. Your mind, your ears will consume more than your mouth ever will. Go ahead. No, read third verse again. What did it say? Incline your ear uh -huh. and, and come unto me. Here and your soul shall live. Uh -huh. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. And who are the sure mercies of David? We've seen that that star of David was who? Jesus the Christ. The root. Now let's go to St. John, the fourth chapter. See, I, I, ain't, I, I don't want to be like Brother Bowie. You be talking about Brother Bowie, he'll throw you out. He ain't got no time to play with you. Because we're learning some people here that's going to be beneficial to you. Now let's look some more at this water now. St. John 4 and verse 7. St. John 4 and 7. We're still talking about this water, which is representing the word of God. Okay, go ahead. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Uh-huh. Jesus saith unto her, Go ahead. Give me the drink. Now, this woman asked Jesus, give me, you know, Jesus asked her, give, me, give me something to drink. And let's see what she said. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Uh-huh. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, Go ahead. How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me? Uh-huh which am a woman of Samaria. Go ahead. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Right, see this woman, she thought she was a Samaritan because that's the land she was in. But she was a stranger because the Lord had took the nine tribes out by the king of Assyria. And she was there in the land, she'd been there so long, she thought she was a Samaritan and she knew that Jesus was a Jew because he came out of the tribe of Judah. But the Lord told him in Matthew 10, you can read it on your own, that they go, told Israel, go not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yes, but was he dissing the rest of the nation? No, he had to get the teachers up first before he get the students. Yes, sir. But let's see what happened now. Jesus answered and said unto her, 
If thou knowest the gift of God and, uh -huh. who, and who it is that saith to thee, give me the drink, uh -huh. thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. He would have given you what? Living water. And what living water is this that he won't give you, people? The word of God. Go ahead and read. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Go ahead and read. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well and drank thereof himself uh -huh. and his children and his cattle? Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Mm. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Ooh, what water is this that the Lord can give you where you'll never thirst again, people? The word of God. That's why whosoever will, let him come to the waters and drink. Go ahead and read. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Ain't that something? Not only this, this water will quench your thirst, but it'll spring up in you. And it'll be a well of everlasting life. But this woman, this spiritual woman, she can't gather to this water. She won't give it to you. She wants you to drink because it's the will of God to drink that water. And you'll have everlasting life. What did the woman say? She got some wisdom. She answered, did she answer crazy or did she answer with some wisdom? Go ahead. The woman said unto him, sir, give me this water that <laughs> I... <laughs> Ain't that something? <laughs> we need to say the same. Lord, give me this water. I need it. Go ahead and read that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. All right, that's good enough. Now let's go. Here's a piece that uh, I used to read all the time. I never understood it, but when the Lord gives you some understanding, you can see all things. Let's go to Psalms 23 now. We used to quote this all the time. Ooh, that 23rd Psalm. This and that, uh, that St. John, you know, for God so loved the world. Uh -huh. I mean, don't nobody know no scripture, they know that. I told man, you don't know John 3.16. We you in bad shape, bro. But now <laughs> Psalms 23. You know they quote that all the time. But let's see what it's really talking about. 23 and verse 1. What did it say, my brother? The Lord is my shepherd, I uh, shall not want. Yes, he is. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now you gotta understand this is Jesus talking now. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. But pay attention now. He leadeth me beside the still waters. What water is the Lord Jesus laying down besides people? The word of God. When is the last time you laid down beside the still water and drank of the pure river that's flowing from the belly of God? Read that verse again, brothers, that verse too. Go ahead. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And when you land down beside the still waters, what's going to happen to you? Go ahead and read. He restoreth my soul. Oh, that's how you restore your soul, huh? Go ahead. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness uh -huh. for his name's sake. Go ahead. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh -huh. I will fear no evil, for Where's thou art. Where's the valley of death at? Where's the valley of death at, people? It's right here on this earth. When you walk out that door, guess where you're walking at? In the valley, valley of, of the death. shadow of death, people. But if you got that word with you, you've been drinking that water, you ain't gonna fear no evil. Why? Go ahead. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Uh-huh. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And the Lord has comforted you, got that word. The Lord said, ain't nobody can stand before you. He'll be a shield and buckler to you. But go ahead and read. Thou preparest a table before me uh -huh. in the presence of mine enemies. Go ahead. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. See, Jesus got that water gushing out, but we get it in measure. Because we can't handle all that gushing. We'll die. It's too much for it. Yes, but Jesus' cup was running over. Go ahead and read. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Uh -huh. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All right. Now, let's go a little further, people. Let's go to Daniel, the second chapter. See, all the prophets knew and spent time with this woman with. And they knew who Lord sent her. And when they tapped into it, they retained it up. And 
she brought him a crown of life, just like the book said. Daniel 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 19. This is how we know this woman was sent from the Lord. Daniel 2 and 19. And when you get it, go in. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Uh-huh. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Because then you know Nebuchadnezzar wanted to know a dream, couldn't nobody figure it out. But the Lord gave the vision to Daniel. Well, let's see what happened now. Go ahead. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. Why? For wisdom and might are his. Our wisdom and might are his. That's why it's not found in the land of the living. Go ahead and read. And he changeth the times and the seasons. Uh huh. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Oh, that man, that says a lot for the voters, right? Go ahead and read. <laughs> <laughs> keep read, keep read. He giveth wisdom unto the wise uh -huh. and knowledge to them that knoweth understanding. He give it to them because I say when that woman wisdom show up, he she bring her two brothers with her knowledge and understanding. Yes, sir. But 22, what did he say? He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Boy, that's pretty, pretty, clear. That's pretty clear, ain't it? Yes, sir. But now, turn over to Daniel, the fourth chapter. And we're going to read 1, 2, 3, and we're going to do some skipping. Daniel 4 and 1, 2, 3. What did it say now? Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. That's right, because Nebuchadnezzar was the first world ruler. But he's telling peace be unto you, but hey, the Lord, it showed him something. Go ahead and read. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. That's right, the Lord showed them because he go ahead and read. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. Uh-huh. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Ain't that something? And Nebuchadnezzar was a Gentile, was the first Gentile world ruling power, but the Lord showed him that he was the one that ruled in the kingdom of men. Because Nebuchadnezzar was standing on his back and he said, uh, did not I build this great Babylon by my own two hands? And the Lord heard that and came down. He sent the watchers down on him. Because mm. he's going to teach us a lesson. Israel got to know it and the Gentile. But now I want you to skip down to verse 17. Continue. What did it say? This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the, of the word by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men uh -huh. and giveth it to whomsoever he will uh -huh. and setteth up over it the baseth of men. Ain't that something? Nebuchadnezzar had to learn that. And all men got to learn it. But he said, the watchers, I told you looking at everything, them seven spirits of God and the holy ones is two, Father and Jesus. And all the angels that didn't get kicked out of heaven when Satan got kicked out. They hold it, they spirit, and they watch it. But go ahead and read. 18. This, this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretations thereof. Uh -huh. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able. For the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Yeah, I, I could have said, because the spirit of the Holy Ghost is in you. But now, skip down to verse 24 and continue. What did it say? This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the king, uh -huh. that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. Uh -huh. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Uh -huh. And they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee. Till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. And giveth it to whomsoever he will. Ain't that something? This is something we got to learn. But you know what he said? He said he made Nebuchadnezzar to eat grass like an ox. Yes, sir. For seven years. And his hair grew longer than eagle feathers and his nails longer than bear claw. But after seven times passed over him, that means seven years, his reading returned unto him. See, that's how we know when the book says time, time, and the dividing of time is three and a half years. Because why the Lord said he let seven times pass over Nebuchadnezzar. It was seven years. But after that, 
his reason became unto him. And what happened? Go ahead and read. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. Ah, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you back, but one thing you've got to know before you get back to Peking. Go ahead and read. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Uh, what verse are you at? Uh, the end of 26. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, uh -huh. and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be lengthening of thy tranquility. That's right, but Nebuchadnezzar had to learn that the Lord is the one that giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh understanding, and that he rule in the kingdom of men and do whatsoever he will in the armies of heaven. And I mean, I don't know if you, if you are paying attention, the Lord is beating this earth down. But he doing it to get your attention so he won't have to kill you. I mean, it's tragedy everywhere because the Lord is trying to get your attention. And if you don't give it to him, he's going to keep on doing it until you do. But now let's go to 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Because it's something about how the Lord operates is real strange. See, he don't get his people from the hierarchy among those that went to Harvard and those at the great minds of, uh, you know, let's see how the Lord get his people. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 20. Okay, go ahead. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Uh -huh. Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Also, the wisdom of this world is foolish. Why? Because they excluded God out of it. Take prayer out to school. You can't talk about the Bible. When you, hey, that's what made his wisdom foolish. Go ahead and read. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Go ahead. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So that's why the Lord loved his preaching. That's why the brothers out there preaching everywhere all over the world. Because it pleased the Lord by the fruit of the preaching. Because the ones that hear that word, they're going to believe. Because the Lord said, my sheep shall hear my voice, but another sheep shall they not hear. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. For the Jews require a sign, uh -huh. and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And they do. But when you look at the Greeks, they all up under water with that Jacu stove thing. They looking at all the fish. They seek it with, but they ain't Jacu paying no attention to the word of God. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, uh -huh. and unto the Greeks foolishness. Go ahead. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Also, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Go yes, ahead sir. and read. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Uh -huh. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Ain't that something? Well, who do the Lord call me? Who do he give this wisdom to? Who does this woman from God visit? Go ahead and read. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. What? Read. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Uh-huh. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. That's what God chose? Yes, sir. That's something, man. Go ahead and read. Yeah. And things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Go ahead. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Oh, that's why he do it. So can no flesh glory in his presence. Mm. The wise man can't say he did it because a fool is the one that taught him. The strong say he can do it because a weak guy showed him. But why do the Lord say he do it? So that no flesh can glory in his presence. But if you want to glory, let's see what you're supposed to glory in. Let's go to Jeremiah 9. Jeremiah 9. And look here, y'all. Uh, it look like uh, y'all getting tired on me. I'm going to have to close this thing. I ain't going to be able to finish, man. My reader dying on me. Wait, what? Everybody's going. Wait, what? Everybody's knowing y'all putting me to sleep. I'm lying to start now. Now, do you want me to finish or you want me to keep going? 
Jeremiah 9 and 23. Let's see what we're supposed to be glorying in. Jeremiah 9 and 23. And when you get it, go ahead and read. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Uh. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Go ahead. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Go ahead. But let him that glorieth, glorieth in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Ain't that something? So that's what you're supposed to be glorying in. Glorying that you know the Lord and you got the truth. And you think, you think not, when you go outside and you among your everyday journeys, look around and see how many people got the true word of God like you. Right. You feel like you're walking around with a big secret and you want to tell everybody, but as soon as you open your mouth, they say, yeah, you crazy, you in a cult, you are stupid, because I'm reading a book. Right. Right. Come on, man. But he said, don't worry about that. Glory in this, but not. We're going to keep rolling now because we're going to have you trying to get out of here now. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. We ain't got too much long, long to go, people. Just hold on a little bit long. You know, it never always struck me strange. Before we came to this word of God, we'd be at a party somewhere. Boy, we'd be getting down to 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Sun coming up. And then it, the man stopped saying, y'all got to go home. You'd be getting mad. Oh, man, now. 5 o'clock in the morning. Boy, we, we can't sit for an hour for the word of God. Surely something has went wrong. Ecclesiastes 9 and 13, people, 9 and 13. Let's see what the book say. 9 and 13, what does it say, brother? Go ahead and read. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, uh -huh. and it seemed great unto me. Now Solomon said, this wisdom has seen great unto me. What was it? There was a little city and few men within it. Uh -huh. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Go ahead. Now. There was found in it a poor wise man, uh -huh. and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Go ahead. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Oh, man. Did nobody remember him and he delivered the whole city? Go ahead and read. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Mm. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised. That's why when you go out there and preach that word, your wisdom is what? Despise. Go ahead and read. And his words are not heard. Uh huh. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Make that some? Go ahead and read. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. He'll tear the whole house. So mm. one sinner, he destroys much good people. That's why the Lord said a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. The whole lump. Ecclesiastes mm. 7. And verse 9 this time. But boy, I tell you, you just read this word of God. You'd be surprised what's in here, people. Your mind will be rocked. You'll be rushing home from work to get back into that Bible. That's when you know that you're developing the love of God. Yes, sir. Because it becomes more and more precious. The Lord said the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in the field. To when a man finds it, but he sells it all that he has and buys mm. that treasure. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, what does it say, bro? Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Oh, where does anger rest at? In the bosom of fools. Well, every time I see you angry and you pissed off about something, I'm going to start looking at you with an eye of suspect. <laughs> but go ahead and read. Say not thou. What is the cause that the former days were better than these? Uh huh. For thou doest not inquire wisely concerning this. That's right. You know, don't say, oh, man, I wish I was living back in the days with David. It would have been so much better. Don't say that. You don't know that. Lord said you ain't wise concerning that. Mm. You could be the worst dude back in David's time. Right. Yes, sir. Lord knew what time he wanted you to be in, and this is where you at. Deal yes, with sir. it. But go ahead and read. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. Uh -huh. And by it there is profit to them that see the sun. Go ahead. For wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. Uh -huh. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Oh. Wisdom giveth life to them that got it. But you were dealing with that spiritual woman from the Lord. You got to read, you got to study. But now let's see. We're talking, we're listen, talking about the wisest man that ever lived. Let's go to 1 Kings 4 now. 1 Kings 4. 
And let's see what this brother did, man, because uh, you can learn from the wisest man that ever lived, people. Yes, sir. Surely you can learn something, man. First Kings 4 and 29. Okay. Go ahead. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. Also, to Solomon spent some time with that, that woman of wisdom, huh? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And largeness of heart. Uh huh. Even as the sand that is on the seashore. Boy, can you imagine your mind being stretched out like the sand that's on the seashore? Mm. I mean, you got some wisdom. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Solomon was loaded. And the Lord said he'll do the same thing for you. And that James, he said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who give it to all men liberally and abrade if not. He said, but let him ask in faith, not waver, for he that wavers like the wave of the sea, tossed and driven with every wind of doctrine. And let not that man think that he should receive anything from the Lord, because a double-minded man is unstable in it's all unstable. his ways. Yes, sir. But look what Solomon did. Now, what did he say? He enlarged his heart, and what happened? And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country. Oh. Uh. And all the wisdom of Egypt. So there ain't no need of dealing with that uh, Egyptology. Because <laughs> Solomon's wisdom excelled way above more than that. Go ahead and read. For he was wiser than all men. Uh huh. Than Ethan, the, Ez the Ezhite. Go ahead. And Heman, the. Charcoal, oh, God, go ahead. And Darda, the sons of Mahal. Uh huh. And his fame was in all nations round about. Go ahead. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Boy, that boy was talking with, because his mind was like the sands of the sea. Go ahead and read. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, uh -huh. even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. Go ahead. He spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. I mean, Solomon was talking, wasn't he? Go ahead and read. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. And see, these are the kind of things you're supposed to be teaching your children, man. From among your people was the wisest man that ever lived. Ain't that something? But something about Solomon that struck me strange. And let's see what it was. Back up to the third chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Because now David had died and turned his thing over to Solomon. And the Lord asked him a question. 1 Kings 3 and verse 7. Okay, go ahead. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made me made thy servant king instead of David, my father. Uh huh. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. That's right. And when you come to this thing, you got to become as a child. So I'm a little child. I don't know how to come out and go in. But go ahead and read. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. Uh huh. A great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Uh huh. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? See what I'm saying? He ain't stand up and said, Lord, look here. Let's definitely be hit that lotto. I promise you, I'll be in class 10 minutes before we He didn't say that. He said, look here, Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. How many people have you stood up and said, look here, I got a testimony. He said, well, what is it, young man? He said, look, I just want to thank the Lord God of Israel for giving me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in his word. Yes, sir. You ain't heard it that one time. But now, look what this speech did, 10th verse. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Oh, he pleased the Lord. So when you ask the Lord to hit that lotto, Lord, just give me three Eldorados, a big house, and a big old yard, and I promise you, I'll convert everybody in the neighborhood. He didn't say that. Go ahead and read. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and, and hast not asked for thyself long life, uh -huh. neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked for life of thine enemies, Go ahead. but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Go ahead. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. Yes. So that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. That's how we know Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. Lord, so I'm going to 
because you ask this thing, not only am I going to give you that, I got something else I want to give you. Go ahead and read. And I have also given thee that, that which thou hast not asked, uh -huh. both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Ain't that something? But you know what this reminds me of? The Lord said, seek ye first the kingdom, kingdom of, of God heaven. and all these other things will be added unto you. Yes, sir. Ain't that something? All right, really, we got to go quick because they're walking out on me now. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to 1 Kings 10 now. 1 Kings 10. We got two more scriptures after this, people. Two more. I, I know that'll give you some relief. Two more scriptures. But uh, the Lord told you that, hey, this word is despised. 1 Kings 10 and verse 1. What did it say, bro? And when the queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, uh -huh. she came to prove him with hard questions. And that's what they do. People find out you got that word, they come and prove you. Well, what about this? How do you know? How are you in a cup? Hey, but you need to take your time and crack the book and answer every one of them. Mm. Go ahead and read. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, uh -huh. with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. Yeah, see, she wasn't coming to him on no, no uh, fleshly thing. She would come to him concerning the things about the Lord. And what happened? Third verse. And Solomon told her all her questions, that there was none anything hid from the king, which he told her not. Go ahead. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built, uh -huh. and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, uh -huh. and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. That's just a past hour when she seen Solomon do that, because he had that thing built where that stairs with that uh, brazen sea of brass. And when the sun came through and hit them stairs, man, the, the temple lit up. She seen them walking and making this sit up to the thing. She passed out. You get this, brother. Yeah. <laughs> but he was a servant of God. The wisest man that ever lived. They said, what no more breath in her. But what did she say now? And she said to, to the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Uh -huh. how, how be it? I believe not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told, told me. Ain't that something? The half wasn't told. But look here now. We got two more scriptures and let's get to them right now. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. Because I do got to get a plane and get out of here, boy. And look like y'all ready to tar and feather me already. I've been keeping an eye on that back door. If you see me shoot out that way, you know. But now, <laughs> Proverbs 11 and verse 29, what did it say now? He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. Ooh, that's some good advice, ain't it? Don't trouble your own house. You never went to the store and put it in your pocket and pull out a handful of wind and pay for nothing. Go ahead and read. And the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. You better know it. Go ahead. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Yes, sir. And he that winneth souls is wise. He's wise because he's dealing with that woman that comes straight from the Lord. Go ahead and read. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Uh-huh. Much more the wicked and the sinner. Everybody's going to be repaid right here in the earth. You ain't going nowhere. But now, let's go to Proverbs 24. This is the last scripture. Proverbs 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And this is a thing to always remember for all the children of God, no matter what nation, what nationality you come from. Remember this here. Proverbs 24 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Don't, don't be trying to be with evil men. Don't be trying to be like these big rappers and all that. These boys ain't heading to the kingdom. They're going to a wrong place. But go ahead and read. For their heart studieth destruction, uh -huh. and their lips talk of mischief. Uh -huh. Through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding is it established. What? That's how a house is built? Yes, sir. Through wisdom and knowledge? Go ahead and read. 
and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Praise God. A wise man is strong. Yeah, a man of knowledge increases strength. Yes, sir, because he's going to spend with some time with that woman, spiritual woman from the Lord called wisdom. So I thank you for your time, and I hope somebody learned something from what I tried to bring. In Jesus' name. We'll have an announcement.